Good afternoon. I believe everybody is now back to the hall. Few, few, few seats are, I think, unoccupied. Have they left or they are coming? Any idea? They are coming and they have they left. Anyway, uh, first I'd like to introduce and welcome our the next speaker, Dr. Rajiv Seth. As a very, very important link for Indian Medical Association as far as uh, child sexual abuse is concerned. He is the first person who was given Oration Award, Sema Oration Award in 2013. So, on behalf of all of you, I'd like to welcome Dr. Rajiv Seth and I'll present a bouquet to him as well. So now the next uh, topic is clinical approach to management of child abuse prevention, medical evaluation, management and referral response. Again you will be listening to whatever we have discussed uh, since morning, you will be going through step by step and telling you each and everything and uh, I hope whatever we have discussed in the morning is going to help you again to uh, understand what Dr. Rajiv said is going to talk to you. Uh, and I will request Dr. Rajiv said to please take the mic and start. Thank you. Thanks to all of you. It's, I'm so excited to be here actually. Um, I Sanjeev have taken uh, lectures on child abuse for a number of years. Uh, but uh, it's when, I, when I'm invited by uh, Dr. Tandon, I am amazed the house, house is full today. Each and every seat was occupied when I came before lunch and maybe <laughs> this, was, this was something very unique because uh, whenever I take, I just have in our own medical fraternity maybe 8 to 10 doctors, what is child abuse, you know, you know, isme, why should I get involved, isme mere ko kya fayda hoga? all that stuff and it is not taught in medical colleges and nursing schools also and, and it needs a multidisciplinary input, it's a very, very important part. Now, you are all uh, from the medical fraternity, while as nurses you are looking after child health, okay? But today we are going to ask you to also focus on, on, on child safety. Health and safety are integral parts of the duty for all of us if we want to contribute to nation building. And so this second aspect, you have already discussed about what child sexual abuse is, how do you... Uh, um, you know the how the psychodynamics work how a person grooms a child how they actually uh, repeatedly the child is uh, abused and and then the disclosure and the short and long term consequences so can i have the next slide please i'll interrupt dr ajeev said uh, there's some very surprising news which i was also not aware i don't know whether you are aware or not the nursing Curriculum has got this topic of child sexual abuse. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Give a big hand. That's great. Excellent. We, uh, with the help of Dr. Tandon here and Dr. Agarwal, we are trying to get this linked in our medical curriculum. So, nursing curriculum is more advanced than us. You know, <laughs> you know what? I, I thought I'll just give you a background. Now, in the morning, you discuss child sexual abuse. This is not the only kind of abuse in children. So I'll give you just a big, in the next few slides, very quickly, what other kinds of abuses are there and how we as medical professionals, and then just come quickly to uh, the prevention, the main topic. So have you heard of this UN Child Rights Convention? India has signed this. And you know what is the age of the child? I'll ask. 18, 1 age, exactly. That's not true. Next slide. Okay, so... This is based on non-discrimination, principles of best interest of the child, the right to life, survival, development and respect for views of child. Next. Sunai to dera hai na sabko aapko piche tar. Okay, good. So, child abuse, you've already had, what is the definition? It's a basic violation of human rights. It's basically all kinds of abuse, both physical, emotional, sexual harm, neglect. Even if you're neglecting a child, it's kind of an abuse. And commercial and sexual exploitation, very common. People working as child laborers, that's also abuse. In fact, any of these activities which actually causes harm or potential harm to a child's health, survival, development or dignity in the context of relationship of responsibility, trust and power, this is child abuse. 
This is difference from violence against children where anybody could be having, giving, uh, having violence. In violence, the person may not be someone in, in power, in positions, but in abuse, it is, it is defined as some, someone whom the child trusts and there's a power he has over this child in order to abuse. Neglect, you know, is, is the definition where there's intention or omission by a caregiver to provide the basic needs of a child, in, like health, education, emotional. Parents are supposed to give all this. But if the parents are poor, extremely poor, we can understand if they cannot, then it is not called neglect. But in the context of resources available, the resources are available in the family, yet they are not doing, it causes harm to the child's health, physical, mental, spiritual, moral development, then it is called abuse, it is called child neglect. So child neglect and child abuse, both if you combine this, is called child maltreatment. In your books you say child maltreatment means abuse and neglect combined. Next please. This is the US data, they have reporting. You report, so thousands of children are reported in the US. There in America, the rich country, neglect is the predominantly. So I just wanted to give you the whole picture. 78% of child neglect. Sexual abuse is only 10%. The whole day we are talking of sexual abuse, but neglect here in our country is more predominant. Physical abuse around 18%. Medical neglect and other kinds of emotional neglects are a little less common. So you can see, we don't have Indian data too much. But whatever we little we have, we know that sexual abuse and violence is too much in our country too. Next please. This is a national study of child abuse in India in 2007. 12,000 children in 13 states. They found that children, 53% of children reported some amount of sexual violence. You know, it could be contact, non-contact, whatever. So there was a... Then recently the NCPCR in 2012 said that 99% of children are basically subjected to corporal punishment. Aap mein se school mein kabhi kisi ko maar padi hai? Haat khada kare. Main abhi khada karta hu. 99%. So, this is against the law. As for the Right to Education Act, a child cannot be beaten between 6 to 14. So, you, if somebody comes to you and the child is beaten, that's physical abuse and if it occurs in a setting of school, it's against the Indian law. Next. So, physical abuse, more than two-thirds in this, our own study, okay, this is in states of Andhra, Assam, Bihar and Delhi are notorious and higher is uh, this thing. You know, people are beaten all the time. I have adopted a school in uh, Mewat where Dr. Tandon is going to come and see me with me. I mean, I was surprised walking into school, betos hai maar rahe I mean, how can they do that? It's against the law. Next, please. Sexual abuse, we have discussed. And, and sexual abuse, again, we have street children, working children, Ch children in institutions, you have heard home care may abuse each other. You know, that is something that we, we want to have child protection policies and we talk about prevention. Next, please. So, you should know the basic facts. And since morning you had lunch and things will be sinking in and maybe sleep coming in, but I will keep waking you up. Okay? Child sexual abuse is a basic set so that it occurs in the hands of someone the child knows or he trusts. The person is most likely to be a family member. Okay, member or someone who the child, who, you know, the, who the child, you know, the neighbor could be one of them. Uncle, bahut achha bachya ko dikha raha hai, yo, bitti sundar hai, kitna hai hai, milao chocolate khilata hai, all those things. These are the people. Kisi ke shagal pe to likha nahi hota ki he is a abuser. But these are primary impact of sexual victimization is not physical, but psychological. Agar abuse chalta raha it's a psychological trauma. Examination mein kuch nahi milega aapko. Potential for long term emotional and behavioral consequences. Next. And emotional abuse. We don't have enough psychiatrists or psychologists or, you know, so we don't have much data, but this is more than 50% of the children in our country at one time have suffered emotional abuse. Next. So, talking of child abuse is a worldwide problem. All of you from now should realize it's a medical problem. It's a public health problem and all of us and you are integral part of the team that you will have to work is extremely serious and should receive uh, uh, attention. And in fact, this slide, I took it from the Dental Institute in Malana Zad. I gave a lecture. Can you believe in the Dental Institute wants to talk about child abuse, you know? So it is something it's everybody wants to now know more and we need to understand how we can uh, make an impact. Next. 
so there are short term and long term effects and doctor uh, our sagar has already covered this fear anxiety depression anger hostility poor self esteem tendency towards substance abuse depression long term effects are more graver because if the long term effects keep occurring if the abuse takes place a long time then it leads to adverse childhood experiences and even later on in life when they are 40 or 50 there is a higher incidence of non communicable diseases like coronary artery disease diabetes substance abuse depression if a child have, has been sexually abused in early childhood next please while we don't have much data from our country itself but we have signed all the treaties india goes and signs the un declarations and based on the declaration you know we have now at least india is making progress we have laws you are familiar of the pocso act all of you protection of children from sexual offenses came in 2012 and so a lot of new acts and legislation there's a national child trafficking bill which is going to be passed in uh, in december so next week we are doing a conference on child trafficking so there's lot of new laws that are coming which are related to children and there was a general comment the article 19 of this convention is is something the focus of child abuse and neglect and in a un comment 13 was uh, uh, developed how governments can then guide and maintain ch complex child protection systems next please so violence against children i will start with prevention i think you've heard enough of child sexual abuse taking place but in our country where we have so much of poverty illiteracy socio economic huge population and challenges shouldn't we all do something to prevent this we cannot get justice to each and every child but certainly if we can prevent violence and sexual abuse it will be wonderful so your role is important in identifying reporting referral investigations and to work as a multidisciplinary team next so this is what i was saying that it is utmost important because we have large population sizes underprivileged rural and urban populations with socio economic constraints and lack of well developed child protection systems we must take steps to prevent and i will talk how we can prevent next prevention is neglected often and the un general comment also says prevention should be directed against all stakeholders against the children in the families and community professionals like you nurses psychologists teachers institutions both in government and civil society next doctors and medical professionals and i'm mentioning doctor i mean nurses now doctors nurses medical professionals they need to talk to a parent the importance of safety personal space and privacy information by age of 3 years encouraging parents to teach their children the concept of okay and not okay touch now doctors can discuss this right after the completion of the non genital component of the annual examination and discuss okay and not okay touching provides a very very easy transition when the doctors can do even genital examination so you can talk about you know what your private parts are and you can you know and is absolutely a taboo that anyone can touch them and fondle them and this is not okay to touch that so just okay and not okay you know this is something and next please so there are studies all over the world uh, david finkelhoff is a pioneer in this field who has done research and he's he suggests that we should encourage parents to teach their children about body part safety and tell them not to keep a secret supposing in school if the teacher is molesting or if there is having um, you know touching their private parts they, you know a child is always confused is traumatized he doesn't know how to react but you know when the groomers you know the accusers they say okay you know you you shouldn't do the you know they want them to keep secrets the the children should be taught that they should not keep secrets so absolutely they should tell to adults right away next so telling parents that they should limit the individuals who provide genital and perianal and bathing care someone very trustworthy only encouraging parents to teach their children the appropriate names of their private parts it so happened in in us a mother told this thing that you know for the vagina they use the term diamonds so when a abuse was taking place in the school and she she told the teacher the child told the teacher that the teacher touched my diamonds so 
it was just she didn't understand what the hell is going on you know so appropriate parts and in our country we have different cultures different languages so how to communicate what is a good language we need to devolve these systems and prevention is extremely important and we need to look for child you know preventing abuse uh, and especially in terms of you know from 3 years onwards it's very you know children today are very smart they are they're exposed to so much so by 3 years they're ready next so you know as as doctors nurses we cannot immunize children against child sexual abuse we can immunize against very lots of diseases but if we are able to incur anticipatory guidance we can you know shift the acute care focus to provision of anticipatory guidance it'll be just wonderful and fi family life skills life skills education what are life skills you know skills that you need to acquire in order to be able to face challenges of life it is it is more than just academic education where you are emotionally strong and you are able to handle these things so these are in, inculcated within the children right early it helps them to prevent against sexual violence next so we have a collective responsibility and there are studies in america to show that children who are armed with information are 6 to 7 times more likely to develop protective behavior so all responsibility is not just my or you or everybody need need to the child's right to personal safety and privacy next please now prevention of child sexual abuse goes beyond parents also in our institutions i mentioned in hostels we need to have child protection policy in place in schools and where children are available background checks should be made on the staff and the workers and more research needs to be done on various forms of child sexual abuse rape and assaults are extreme uh, forms of abuse which you, the media always highlights but there are minor which are also ongoing but lead to equal amount of trauma uh, emotional trauma to a child so media has a important role in making everybody aware and sensitized and we need to involve and educate parents teachers health workers including our aganwadis and community health workers in the communities like asha workers this knowledge should go down to the ashas so as nurses you will be the anms and uh, supervisors of nursing programs and under you people the community workers you will have ashas and aganwadi you need to teach them about this the consequences have already been discussed i don't want to say the physical symptoms uh, if a child is abused it can lead to sexual transmission disease today in the hospital if child came 14 years and she was pregnant how will you handle you know the the doctor there my junior call me says there's a 14 year old who has come as pregnant what should i do can somebody tell me what what you're supposed to do obviously the 14 year old who's pregnant she has been sexually abused is obvious okay and what you need to do is to in again again in the you as nurses as professionals have a mandatory report to report to the police right away yes you have to do the mtp you have to do the treatment you have to see that the child is safe and not bleeding and other things but you must do this of immediately re report so itching and other areas the other symptoms could be frequent urination repeated utis again uh, difficulty in walking etc next so behavioral indicators you need to look out for them because child who's suddenly doing well in school is not not doing well in school he is having abrupt behavior refusing to undress his sexual knowledge is much advanced than his his age excessive fear of specific paces recurrent physical symptoms recurring nightmares disturbed sleep and all these uh, regression of milestones in smaller children uh, bed wetting thumb sucking excessive uh, you know uh, you know uh, trying to be excessively irritable what you know uh, sometimes they go into depression pretty fast but there sometimes they are just acting out behavior will be there so there it leads to lots of peer relationship problems and if they are more uh, bigger children adolescents they can have negative coping skills substance abuse uh, self harm and disrespectful behavior their school performance will decline and and these are things that i have already touched advanced sexual knowledge so you know a child is a child until 18 years is a child so all these you know are age appropriate uh, you know you a child a smaller child will will have different symptoms an adult child you know so a little older child so these are things that you have to when you know when you speak and you take your history 
it should be taken in a non-judgmental manner, in a manner where you could be more empathetic and also uh, let the child speak in his own language and then you will be able to get more information. Next. So I mentioned to you that children who are abused and chronically abused in early childhood, they when they grow up as, a, as adults, they will demonstrate some abnormal diseases and these diseases could be physical as well as mental. Next please. There are now studies to show that adult survivals of childhood emotional and sexual abuse are at increased risk for depression, mental health disorders, increases of heart disease, obesity and other fatal conditions. So therefore as medical professionals it's very important for us to talk about preventing abuse. Thanks. So we're going to talk on the principles of medical evaluation. What you're supposed to do, you know, what is a doctor's responsibility, what is your responsibility, supposing you're in a very remote place, how you're going to handle it. If there's no doctor, many times there's no doctor. If you go 80 kilometers away from Delhi, there is not even a pediatrician there. And there are doctors who are simple uh, registered medical practitioners. And therefore, uh, you know, you, you need to, you know, what you, your responsibility is to diagnose, prognosticate, provide therapy, and then medical legal as well. If you are all by yourself, accurate documentation, collecting evidence for legal purposes. So you are just one part of uh, the whole puzzle. I mean, in terms of you, in your book, which has given to you, you know, it's very, very, you know, forensic part is already listed to you. You can go through the chapters. Now you are not supposed to, but at least you need to protect and preserve the evidence. Next, please. So components of a medical diagnosis are basically, like you've read, there's a history taking, examination, laboratory tests like for STDs, looking for physical injuries, and then forensic evidence. Evidence collection is an extremely important part. So in order to make, this is a very famous, very, in the ancient days, 1873, this is a doctor from Europe. He says the fruit of healing grows on the tree of understanding. Without diagnosis, there can be no rational treatment. Examination comes first, then judgment, and then one can give help. So you need to examine first before judging. Don't be judgmental. And don't come up to your own conclusions. Look for evidence and, and then ask for help. Next. Why the important importance of history taking? It's in fact the most important thing. Okay, the patient who comes to us has a story to tell. No one knows this story. And therapy only really begins when we understand the whole personal story. It is a patient's secret. The rock against, he's shattered. If I knew his story, I have the key to the treatment and the doctor's task is to find out how to gain that knowledge. So as a nurse at that position, you, are in a, you should be in a position to get that information of the history. This is an art and a science. It doesn't come. As you go more senior, your skills get refined and the way you approach children, how, how you get the information through a non-leading, non-suggestive technique. And medical history can be obtained independent of the caretakers. You never know the adult who has come with the child may self be the abuser or a perpetrator of the crime. So sometimes it's better to ask them to just leave, let the child be alone with you. And if you are a male, I would say you always have a female next to you who, who's always there with you so you can get information. And just verbatim record the, as the child responds to your question. It is best to avoid showing strong emotions as shock. Supposing she's, the disclosure with the child is making is a very crucial time. He's, he's had all pending emotions that he has had in, he or she has had inside and he or she is trying to ventilate. So let them ventilate. Don't interrupt. Let them understand. You know, just yes, yes. You can say, Acha, or kya hua? Acha, or batao, bite, or batao. You know, just gradually. So this is, don't show shocks. Because you, if you are going to be afraid, Oh, he kya hua? Oh, tumne aise karne diya. He is, she or she is not at fault. Okay? So you need to, so history taking is an art. And this history taking is the most important. And I'll tell you why. Next. I can tell you because you are a doctor. This paper was published in one of the leading journals of pediatrics in the United States, written by Martin Finkel. So I can tell you because you are a doctor. I can tell you because you are a nurse. Okay, this is something is extremely important. And we have the privilege, class of medical community, 
who actually can broach upon, but how we address, how we take care, how we kind of not judge the child too much and let the child ventilate, make the child comfortable. You know, you can't just, you know, he's already gone through so much. Next. So sexual abuse is diagnosed on the basis of history. 95% of the times it is only history taking. So if you are in a remote place and you are the only medical professional, you know, taking the child in a quiet place, uh, private place, where confidentiality and, and then you and the child and you could really obtain a lot of historical facts. And on that basis and proper documentation, 95% of the times the doc, the, you don't really need to do much more examination. Next please. So the, in the med medical history, you should take family history, social history, you should review all the systems and you also focus on the ANO in the genital area. If the child is an adolescent, then you need to look at age of menarche and the date of last menstrual period because you never know this child could be pregnant like the one happened this morning. The ch changes in the child's behavior should be documented. Next please. So the diagnosis, the whole purpose of the examination of child sexual abuse is to diagnose and treat the abnormality, whether it's extra genital or genital, and to look at sexually transmitted diseases, rule out pregnancy, and, and, and then look at the wellness pattern, see if they are having any specific worries, if there is, you at the same time while you are doing examination, you become a counselor actually. You know, in India it is impossible to get a mental health counselor in every nook and corner, even in the best of hospitals. So you become the persons whom they will be revealing. And, and while they are revealing, that should be documented because that becomes an important piece of evidence in the court of law. Next, please. Now, if the child comes early, within the 72 hours, there is more likely that you can get evidence. So what we suggest, and I will talk, that if you have in your hospital a, 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 a room which is, which is a comprehensive child response unit where multidisciplinary professionals, your doctors in your hospital, your nurses in your hospital, your psychologists, counselors, whosoever they are, administrators, they want to do a complete history and examination, it can be done quietly in one place, rather than subjecting a child to multiple history taking and multiple examinations. And if it happens in 72 hours, if the child comes within 72 hours of the trauma, then there is more likelihood that you can gather more evidence and you obviously look at possibilities of sexually transmitted diseases and possibility of ruling out pregnancy. Next. Now if the child comes later, after 72 hours, and the child is uncooperative, then it is all right to defer the examination component to a later date when you have all your systems in place. So when the child comes at 2 o'clock and you don't have doctors, you don't have your own forensic professionals, everyone around, then you can defer it. Next, please. So examination of the child, the standard head-to-toe position, uh, I don't want to go into that. I tell you it is less than 5% of time, but looking at the genital structures. Now, uh, we'll talk of POXO Act, as far as the POXO Act, Whenever a child has to be examined, the child is a female, it should be done by a female doctor, a female nurse, okay? If reasonable, you know, efforts are made in a remote place and you don't have a female doctor, then exceptionally it can be documented and male doctor can do the examination as by the guidelines of the Ministry of Health of Government of India. So you look at this and you position the child, look at the genital structures and collect evidences of so sexually transmitted diseases. And this is something, uh, obviously you do a complete examination, the system examination which is a bruise or there's a trauma mark or a bleeding or anything you need to document and take care and then focus on the general component of the examination where you collect important evidence. Next. So the facts again remain I, that only less than 5% of the cases medical examination is confirmatory. And medical examination rarely differs from a non-abused child and when an appropriate medical history is there, the certainty of regarding the gel trauma can be determined normal. Even if your exam is normal but your history is, is, is suggestive and is more, more uh, well taken, this is how you will make a diagnosis. Next please. You, you need to investigate, you need to do STD screenings, the vaginal, anal swabs, you need to look at urethral swabs, 
uh, HIV, serologies, hepatitis B if the child has not had vaccinations, uh, pregnancy test in adolescent girls, forensic specimens uh, taking uh, uh, you know evidence from the skin, from the hair, you can have nail clipping at times, clothing, saliva, you know ideally in your hospital, in your unit there should be a so-called so safe kit where all these you know swabs and uh, a nail cutter, a scissor and 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 you know it's it's you've all done uh, INDs, you've all done uh, suturings you know those are much easier uh, uh, you will think right now but I tell you this is even more simpler and and if you abuse if you suspect this child has had substance abuse it's n nice to take a urine for toxicology screen next so our management the immediate goals are to make sure the child is safe the child is not in shock the vitals are hemodynamics are normal the blood pressure skin is well warm perfume then you look into the comprehensive medical assessment which includes history examination investigations and documentations so you should have short term goals and a long term goals the short term goals include immediate counseling to this family who suffered so much trauma and social support to the family uh, providing immunizations, STD prophylaxis and co emergency contraception if the case needs. The long term goals are looking at the physical and psychosocial well-being of the child in the context of reintegrating back into the family. Supposing the, if the abuser is one of the stepdads or someone known as this, you know, what you're going to do? You need to, you need to refer this child and I'll talk to child protection you know systems that are available in our country and I'll discuss that further don't make all the decisions yourself and that's the bottom line you do your part and do it well next so emergency care we discuss hepatitis B vaccinations HIV prophylaxis and all children of the family should be screened if only one child is brought ask about other families who knows that the abuser is violating other children as well and these recommendations have come from the Indian Academy of Pediatrics a task force to set up on child rights and protection. Next, please. So, urgent responses is needed. The child is brought sometimes dead, life threatening illnesses. Admissions to the hospitals are needed. If the admission is needed, then there is, you know, you make the sure that the emergency care happens and then you have some time, you know, to address the issue of what the child needs because these are very complex issues. In fact, they are more complex than. Tre tre treating just a medical problem there is a whole angle to child safety and protection which is extremely important next so referral responses and we'll discuss this further more in second slides but you know ideally the planned response you plan your thoughts make a good plan what are you going to do there's a child welfare committee under the juvenile justice act and this is available in each and every district India, in Delhi, we have nine uh, child uh, districts, I think, and every district has a child welfare committee. And if you can't reach them, you can even go through your child helpline. There's a phone number called 1098. Are you familiar with 1098? This is child line, okay? You, they can address, they, you can call, the local NGOs can get involved. And you must be familiar about the POXO Act, the Protection of Children from Sexual Offenses Act, because these children need to be immediately reported. You are mandated. If a doctor doesn't report, he could be put in prison or can be fined to 30,000 rupees or so. And there are sanctions for all this. Next, please. So this is a, like a flow chart. Like if your child comes to you, you screen other siblings, screen for other kinds of abuse. It normally, not, don't forget this, the child is a whole child. In addition to sexual abuse, you could have physical violence, you could have mental, emotional abuse. If there's a life-threatening illness, if there's rape and assault, you need the medical systems to get into the place and the child needs an ICU admission or whatever is needed. And then if there are no problems and the child is safe, all things are done, then only the child should be safe at home, I mean, then the child can be actually sent home. Medical management is always multidisciplinary, including forensic examination and mandatory reporting is, a, is extremely important. And then you need to follow up, have home visitations to monitor and assess, has the abuse stopped? Is the child developing normally? If a child is perpetually abused, the development regression takes place. And therefore, regular follow-up is extremely important. Now, police has an important role to play in the POXO Act. As medical professionals, we must call the police. And we must tell the family, well, we, we 
we you know it's possible that you may be erring on the wrong side but you know that you have responsibilities you tell the family uh, you know that you suspect that the child you know the child is uh, has had some sexual abuse and you you are required as per, as per law as a professional that you need to report to the police and they should be informed next please so again uh, the comprehensive health examination i uh, you know basic principles of our medical policies and all you need to take consents and you take give them first aid and assess now age estimation usually is not really needed if if, if the other evidences are available like school reports and 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 birth certificates and other things but but many many times if the ch person ch a case becomes a, a, a kind of a uh, medical legal case then you need a forensic assessment and x-rays and other things and history examination collect the evidence and then you manage and, and your job is to just treat the child collect the evidence and hand over and you're not supposed you don't become a lawyer you don't become a legal personnel you don't see ki, is ki or you, you, you get your emotions under control all the time next please so, uh, treatment of injuries, STIs, we already discussed this, uh, counseling, discharge, follow-up. Next, please. Thank you very much. Uh, so close kar dije. Oh, wait, uh, okay, so this is finishes one component of the, the talk is o over from one component, okay? You, it's not over that I'm going to send you home right now, okay? So, hang in there, okay? It's got to Okay, if you have any questions in mind, you can ask me now before the, I give you the, the entire brief for the UNICEF program that we're having. Yes, yes. I think there are not a very long chapter is left now. Yeah. Uh, he's going to discuss what exactly is to be done for a child sexual abuse victim. Because where you should send it, the social structure is not well built with us. Yeah. So he's going to discuss all those things. You know, sometimes it's best to learn something by repetition and some things have to say, told to you several times and I, I've always managed that in my life in medicine, you know, you know, every time you have to read. So I'll reinforce certain things that I've already said and these are slides made by four doctors were very relevant for you. Next please. Um, again, talking of physical examination, your physical examination doesn't have to be traumatic. It should be done in a least disturbing manner to the child. Exa the whole exam process should be such that it should be done with clear goals. And, and you need to network. And like you don't want this child to be subjected to 10 different examinations in 10 different facilities. And explain to the parent or the support person that their job is to talk to the child, to distract, have them there, and use drapes to protect the privacy of the child use some means to distract the child. The child should not be just held down, restrained, against fighting, is uncooperative. So these are, you don't want to further traumatize the child. A complete head to the toe time, uh, uh, sexual maturity assessment, assessment of all kinds of injuries, and specific attention to be made to the areas involved in sexual activities. Now, sedation should not be used or used very, very sparingly, but you need to take appropriate consent. If the child is less than 12, then obviously he cannot consent. You need the adult, the parent, who is a legal guardian, okay, to take, give the consent. Next, please. Now, reasons for the absence of physical findings. Why, why I was saying again and again that only less than 5% of the children will have positive findings on examination. It is for these reasons, okay. The nature of assault may not be damaging. Their perception of penetration may differ. The disclosure can be often delayed for a number of years. You know, complete healing can have occurred of the mucosal injuries and hymen changes uh, which take place with puberty. Child often knows the perpetrators and physical violence is not a component of the examination. So it's just a sexual part and therefore many, many times the physical examination could be extremely, uh, uh, just normal. Next. Now, forensic examination. I know uh, I don't want to delve into it. We've had, you know, it takes almost a day to do a forensic, this thing. But just to give you the principles, 
collecting blood, semen, sperm, hair, skin fragments, which can link the assault to an individual person as well to the debris. You know, collecting evidence can occur uh, safely if the sexual contact has occurred within the last 96 hours and the purpose is to ascertain whether the sexual act has been attempted or completed and, and whether such a sexual assault is recent or what is the age of the survivor and whether any alcohol and drugs have been given to the child. Next, you need to formulate a diagnosis based on your history, based on the examination. You need to document all these and the diagnosis should be drawn from the laboratory evidence and these are extremely important so you need to make sure that you don't lose any thread of evidence that you can gather at the time you are doing your first and hopefully the last examination of this child. Next. So you formulate a diagnosis uh, based on historical details, on the behavioral indicators, symptoms that can be directly associated with contact, acute and heel genital injuries, extragenital trauma, forensic evidence, and sexually transmitted diseases. Next. You need to have a differential diagnosis. You know, many, many times a child comes and, you know, the congenital lesions, there are, there are sometimes, you know, um, just dermatitis or vaginitis and, and therefore uh, you know a, you, you need to have a differential diagnosis approach and confirmation of abuse can be difficult in these cases and you need to uh, get specialists involved if need be. Next. So medical treatment of si child sexual abuse uh, we repeat is to looking at uh, the STDs, the sexually transmitted disease, this is appropriate medicines post menarche the possibility of pregnancy, need for emergency contraception, provide provision, your role is very important in providing the emotional support and attention. When child sexual abuse is ser seriously suspected or diagnosed, then it should be reported to the authorities and you need to keep well documented medical records. And these are essential in the legal proceedings over a long, long period that it can take. And the referral to a mental health specialist should be made in all cases. And so you had Dr. Sagar in the morning and he must have discussed about acute stress reaction and post-traumatic stress disorders. Next. So this is a flow chart, taking consent, providing them initial first aid, history, examination, collecting the evidence, treating the child and then discharging after ensuring the child is safe and home. All your evidence that you collect needs to be handed over to the police and the child needs all kinds of treatment, STI, prophylaxis, HIV prophylaxis, emergency contraception, and, and if you need urine tox screens, and referrals to other services. Next, please. So this we have already discussed about the safety, the okay to not, okay touch, and again, uh, you need to talk to your other colleagues, and this is the last line is extremely important. You need, today when you go from here, you need to talk to other colleagues, and those guys need to be sensitized on okay and not okay touch. And it's extremely important that we, it's not possible for IME or anybody to just keep training, you know, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of doctors and nurses, but from you as a core, you know, you become trainers, at least in the prevention module, in terms of saying okay and not okay touch, and teaching children about personal safety and privacy information by the age of three years. Next. Again, don't, don't clap. Two more, okay? <laughs> okay, next. basic idea of this workshop of uh, giving some information about child sexual abuse is that uh, this word should be spread by you every time whenever you get the opportunity you interact with somebody you tell them about child sexual abuse that's the way you can in fact inform public and your colleagues about csa and box and what is to be done in that shape. because whatever we are discussing is just to emphasize that this is what's the importance but what we want from you is just just a message about child sexual abuse and how to prevent it. If we can do this, I think that will be a great job for all of us. If you have any questions, you can talk to me now or you want to take it later because uh, 
you know, I'll be very, very open to having any questions now or later. I thought I'll just run by these slides and then you'll be in a better position to ask better questions. Next, please. Mandatory reporting and ethics. You know, what is the role of doctors, nurses? It's, it's basically, we are in a position, you know, we as professionals, we may be the first point of contact for this child. And, and we are the people who are needed to confirm the diagnosis and to detect abuse. And as medical professionals, we, we need to assess whether the child needs emergency care or the child can be safely sent home. These are our decisions and therefore our roles are crucial. Next. We need to take informed consents. You can't just proceed with a, you know, doing your own things. And according to the Indian law, if the child is older than 12 years, then the child herself, himself can give, right, again, can give consent. But the person giving the consent should be told, you know, if the child is younger, then obviously the person, they, they, they should be told about risks, side effects, benefits, like, you know, spending time with you do for consent for the procedures. And this should be done in all cases, that is when the patient person comes uh, for his and her, you know, for the treatment, for effects of assault, whenever we need uh, for police requisition or the court directive, wherever. And another thing I must mention, you know, you guys have all these, uh, she's also doing something with the phone. You can't just put your mobile phone there, you know, these phones and take pictures. You just cannot do that, okay? In today's internet age, these, if you do that and you've not taken a consent, you yourself can be liable to go to prison. So don't take consent. You have to take consent for each and every, including for photo documentation if you have to. Next. So medical examination, this, these are certain guidelines that you need to be aware of. There's a new law in our country. This is called POCSO Act. Under the section 27, the doctor must conduct the examination. And the, if the victim is a girl, the medical examination has to be done, I told you, by a woman doctor. It is to be conducted in the presence of a parent or any other person whom the child reposes trust or confidence. If such a person is not present or cannot be present, examination is done in the presence of a woman nominated by the head of the medical institution. So these are clear-cut guidelines on the POCSO Act, which is there on the net, or if you want to buy a MOOC from Jain Depot, it's got hardly 20 or 30 rupees. Next, please. Emergency medical care needs to be provided as per the Rule 5. Now, after the nearby gang rape and all the things, Verma Commission reports, if you are a person in the hospital, you're owning a nursing home or you're working in a nursing home, a person comes with a gender-based violence and, and you refuse this, refer that patient elsewhere without doing your basic emergency care, you are liable. Okay, you need to provide uh, and uh, as per the rule 7 of the POCSO, expenses that happen in the medical care of the child can be later be recovered in the compensation award to the child. But you cannot do away thinking, hey, this is not your you know, job. Even if you are just a simple MBBS doctor, if you are a nurse, if you are anybody connected to the medical profession, you need to do your job and, and, and you need to document. And these are the same things we just discussed. Next, please. So mandatory reporting uh, for medical professionals, if you fail to report, you could be in prison for six months. Uh, anybody gone into prison here? Not. No. Okay. Six months, a long time. You know, it cuts off your life, you know, totally. And actually, uh, lots of doctor colleagues, are not we police it. But, you know, there are lots of people in jail already. Which uh, that uh, spiritual guru who is in jail. Asa Ram Babu. You do Sorry. Okay. So I don't want to say, I mean, he is in jail because it's, you know, for uh, uh, violence against the 18-year-old. So it is, it's a practice. It's a, you don't, you have a, no obligation to inform the child. Uh, uh, but it's, it's nice. You know, it's a matter of good practice that you let the parents uh, know that you're going to report to the police. And, uh, and you, what in your report you said, what is the nature of the abuse? If aware, identify the involved parties, give the name, address, and phone number of the child, and the name, address uh, of the parents or caretakers, if known. Next, please. Thank you. And one more, and the last one. So you, that time you give me a big, big thank you applause, okay? Now, 
in fact this last one is the most important of all the presentations why because it talks of a multidisciplinary approach you know a doctor in our setup thinks that he is mahan he does everything he can do everything no a doctor has limited role okay we need a multidisciplinary node our juvenile police unit or local police under the Ju juvenile justice act east district is supposed to have a juvenile special police unit and 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 it also uh, should have child development experts interpreters translators educators social workers support workers ngo workers members of child welfare committee before whom a child may be presented for protection as per the rule 4 of the pocso act advocates legal lawyers and public prosecutors and judges you know if a child goes through so much trauma the whole thing is you want to get justice to the child you want to treat him you want to manage him you don't get justice to this child which is a long drawn legal process and a lot of hand holding so lots of ngos are now coming up who could do this part act as but then the government also is supposed to provide social workers and support workers under the pocso act next so simply a child protection unit you know you have heard of child health all your life probably but child child protection unit in hospital or child response unit is a concept where there's a medical person there's a forensic social work nurses uh, counselors training experts all working together okay here confidentially must be protected and services need to be provided the medical care of the child the counseling of the child parent and family counseling talking about effective implementation of the laws and social social interventions next so whether you are in a private setup or wherever you are you know you know you could organize a ccru which is a comprehensive child care unit where you can conduct do your conduct your examinations including a forensic interview and examination and it has to be done in a a multidisciplinary approach next so child protection unit safe interview uh, safe interview atmosphere uh, is extremely important it should be safe it should be child friendly there should be no distractions that you need put your mobiles on silent or don't take phone calls address privacy and confidentiality have a single ease manager case conferencing and interdisciplinary collaboration next so cpus or child protection units in hospitals lead to better care and recovery of the child better support for the family reduce occurrence of child abuse effective punishment for the perpetrators of these crime and increase reporting of cases now you can clap thank you now i hand over to dr tandon and he's uh, chairing and uh, if are there any questions i can have a seat and we'll discuss thank you dr raj I think the most important thing you have heard about how the child sexual abuse victim are to be managed and who are supposed to take care of uh, the victim. And most important, what uh, we have learned is only one thing: the message should go out to each and every one. How and why we should prevent child sexual abuse? You have heard about everything. Why we should uh, learn about child sexual abuse and why we should prevent it? Now. our role is in prevention more because all of us are not going to treat the only idea of training to all and everyone is to prevent child sexual abuse inform the public inform the parents inform the school teacher inform your colleagues about child sexual abuse and here i would like to tell you two very important things uh, you have heard about the mandatory reporting when there is a victim of child sexual abuse coming to hospital i think there are so many senior sisters are um, sitting here and everybody is aware about the most common procedure which is done in the department of gynae and obstetrics is mtp do you have any idea about mtp role what is important in mtp role there are some guidelines
that is uh, with the consent of a board of uh, doctors. That is something different when MTP is to be done. The most important thing of MTP is probably the thing which is not practiced is uh, not known to any one of us. In POXO, it is a mandatory reporting while MTP rules say it is 100% confidential. How many times you have seen that uh, the MTP patient file has got not a name but a number? I think no one has seen. Rather, no one is worried about that and nobody is aware about that. So this is what is important. The rules are there for, a, I don't know, for how long the MTP rule is there. But there is a confidentiality. You will not write down even the name of patient if you are doing an MTP. The reason, forget about it, that is uh, already not there. But here it is a mandatory reporting. Now there is a case, as Dr. Um, Rajiv said, was saying a 14-year-old girl has come with a pregnancy. You will tell them that you are going to report to the police and then only you will do the MTP. What will happen? <coughs> Patient will disappear and say, no, nothing doing. If you are going to inform the police, I don't want treatment. So this is what is the dilemma which uh, we are facing. Whether to provide treatment or whether to mandatory reporting. So sometimes such rules are creating problems and Many a times, doctors are facing a problem. In such a scenario, one of the doctor is a victim. I mean, maybe many doctors, but one of the doctor whom I know is a victim and he is behind bar. Nobody could do anything because he has been arrested for MTP taken as female feticide. So these are the problems which uh, two acts are creating. But there are so many problems, so many contradictory rules are there. But uh, as we are not aware, as we were not aware about the MTP rules, so same thing is happening for so many rules which we do not know. Even the POXO is facing the same thing. People are not reporting because they just don't know about the POXO and they are simply avoiding also. Then what to do? Because they don't know what next is to be done. So now, uh, if you have any question for Dr. Rajiv Seth or whatever for me, I can uh, give you some opinion. But only an only important thing and I hope and expect that all of you will definitely talk about child sexual abuse and POXO so that we can at least inform our fraternity about these two things and uh, whatever prevention we can uh, inform to the public that will be a great job for the society and that is what we are trying to do that is what is our basic purpose of joining this profession with the medical profession or the nursing profession is a commitment towards the community and the society and that needs prevention of child sexual abuse so any questions from anyone of you How many of you here are uh, principals in your nursing school? Wonderful. Great. Uh, vice principal, there are many vice, vice principals. Vice principals, also. teachers, nursing trainers. Wow. I'm amazed. And uh, regular nurses, practicing nurses. How many nurses here? Wow. I'm just amazed, you know, with, uh, all of you would come. It's wonderful. The only thing is that I would like you and I am very happy that nursing curriculum has already got information but you need to communicate and spread this word around because you become now trainers for other people in your colleges. So I am open to all questions, anything you want to ask, any cases. We didn't discuss a lot of things here. Uh, in fact, in the manual you could see, uh, you know, if you want to do some cases, we could do some cases with you. I think it will make interaction more clear, but I will give you some space. You know, I don't want to be the only one talking, you know. In your in your exercise, um, exercise two, can you open your book? You got, you got the child. Yeah. No, this, this is the same thing your friend does, right? Okay. 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 It's the same thing for you. Case history one. आप देखो मैं आप आप वाले से देख लेता हूँ मेरे को भी दिया ओके ये ये क्वेश्चंस हैं और इनके आंसर्स हैं ठीक है डी केस स्टडीज 
this, you see how आपको मिले वो केसेस आपने देखे उसमें नहीं है अच्छा चलो अच्छा मैं मैं बोलता हूँ आप लिख लो ओके ओके आई विल से दिस ए ट्वेंटी टू ईयर ओल्ड गार्मेंट वर्कर कम्स टू योर हॉस्पिटल ओके ट्वेंटी टू ईयर गार्मेंट वर्कर कम टू योर हॉस्पिटल में फोर ईयर ओल्ड डॉटर मीना एंड शी सेज द चाइल्ड स्टार्टेड अटेंडिंग प्ले स्कूल सिंस टू एंड हाफ ईयर ऑफ एज ओके After which she is taken to a by a private auto, and and with three other children. And since the last three months, this child is scratching and rubbing her groin. And the mother mentions that she has slapped the child couple of times, not to rub her uh, groin in public and in front of others. And uh, and now she is just yesterday noticed there are certain ulcers on the vulva, for which she took it to the local doctor. And the doctor is suspecting sexually transmitted diseases. so tell me um how will you address if this problem comes to you okay this is a 22 year old lady who comes with a 4 year old child and obviously this child was going in an auto okay uh, from the school preschool se aati thi and she was alone at that time and uh, and then she started rubbing the groin and now this mother has noticed some ulcers So can one of you raise hands and tell me what is going on here in this case? Hand, 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 which he like the most which he hate the most where he want to be more uh, often where he don't want to be those places like that uh, point zero down the person who uh, from whom he is getting the exploitation right so basically you know you i'm i'm glad that all of you have come to know so basically if you look into this uh, this entire thing you can see what are the risk factors risk factors to a child you know this child is young okay and has no knowledge about safety okay so you know and the parent uh, is a single working mother okay abandoned by father no support systems are available in the family and we don't have any awareness you know when she sees all this happening so you know what um, you can see that you know so many cases will come to you so uh, what you mentioned was absolutely right but as you do treat you educate okay how to respond how to network how to get other professionals involved so this is very good thank you very much give her a big hand wave thank you very much acha ji ek 10 saal ka bachcha hai ajay gurdaspur ka hai uski mother has died and the father has remarried this okay so his his father uh, then stopped going and making this child go go to school okay make him work in a brick factory in the, in the neighborhood the brick factory user was uh, beating him and then he ran away and now he is found by an ngo in the railway station how do you care for this child this is a child you know you know is a street child a child laborer okay and these children you know when they come with no papa no mama okay then you have to do is to inform either to the child line okay okay or an ngo or or to government child welfare committees so you know in we have done two cases really here today one is with the families there 
when it's very good, mother is there caring, कोई जैसी भी है वो चाहे single है, लेकिन many times you have children who have no families and children with street children and child laborers and these children also need to be addressed. Okay, so hand over to Dr. Tandon. I think thank you, Dr. Rajiv, and uh, thank you, all of you, for your great business. And as the Dr. Rajiv has given you two examples about the cases, I'll give you two live examples of uh, cases where you, the thought process may be off that who can be the victim and who can be the abuser. One abuser history, both parents in MNC employed, educated, engineer. And they had two daughters and one of the daughter was abused by father. And that only came to know once uh, grandmother came to house and the, she came to know about the problem. She told to the daughter, daughter confronted the husband and husband pushed the wife and she died. That case came in front of uh, the law making authorities because of a murder of a mother. Then the story came in, this was all child sexual abuse. This was a educated, highly placed with good amount in their banks. Husband is behind bar. The other case where the female is accused, a principal of a convent school, arrested under POXO for abusing the students. So both the scenario in front of you, both educated and both male and female are accused of this crime and they are behind bar. So the system is trying to detect the cases and there is no bar. Education, no education, rich or poor, male or female. Though definitely it is common in poor socioeconomic strata, and as I have discussed in the morning, the BPL, that is a very important thing. But it's not that the educated and the rich are not involved in such crimes. So we should have a clear understanding that there is no age bar, there is no um, religion, there is no education, there is no money bar. Anybody can be abuser. Anyone known? A father, educated father, can commit such a crime. So you you can believe because in India we have only one relationship which is supposed to be the most pious. That is father and daughter. And if that is not there in India, then uh, we can really imagine what kind of a problem the world is facing. So the certificates for this workshop is uh, outside at the registration counter. The only uh, thing you have to do is write down your name because they are not uh, with names, so you have to write down your name. And um, tea will be served, is already ready in the same hall where we had lunch. We'll have tea, we'll disperse after taking the certificates. And again, my sincere thanks from my behalf, from behalf of Indian Medical Association and on behalf of UNICEF to all of you for coming for this workshop, interacting and listening and with the hope that you have written your emails and mobile number at the counter because that is the idea that we will keep you stimulating day by day and we expect you will promote this kind of activity and try to prevent child sexual abuse. Thank you very much and all the best. Just want to tell you one thing that, you know, in this field, you, if you want to work further and if you want to know more and, you know, you can't do it alone, okay? You need to network and you need to be. So they're like Indian Medical Association, there's other associations and there are, you know, so we, we um, I run this uh, child abuse and neglect group and if you are interested, you become members. As nurses, you can become members. And we, we, we turn out magazines like this was child sexual abuse. Then there was one on care, uh, children who are, uh, you know, street children and, and working in institutions. So there is a lot of opportunity. And if you want to come and be partners with us in, 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 in taking this agenda forward, you know, we can do it. And therefore, your emails are very important. 
So please write your emails because if possible then we can just email to each other and if you have cases and other, other things because just this session will not make you total experts in it. It makes you aware and sensitized but if there's a challenges you can reach out to us. Thank you very much.